Hi. Hello, mate. Um, the good news from the club announcing Jeff Felix's arrival. What do you expect him to bring to your side? Well, he's, he's a quality player. Um, <clears throat> can make a difference in the final third of the pitch. Um, young, but has obviously still had a lot of um, really good experience. So he's just a, a quality player that gives everybody a lift. Is this a deal that came out of the blue, or is it something you've been working on, or the club's been working on behind the scenes for quite a while? And has it been accelerated because of the injury situation? No, we've been aware of it for a while. These things don't happen quickly, but um, <clears throat> obviously the injuries have um, maybe sharpen the focus a little bit but still it's nice to get him uh, here get him get him uh, training today so that's that's positive for us and then um, and then we'll see for the for the game on uh, Thursday so he was registered in time for tomorrow night's we're still waiting for that still waiting for the confirmation to actually play but he was around today I wanted to ask you what, why didn't it work out for him at Atletico do you think or why hasn't it at the moment I have no idea um, it's um not for me to sort of speculate on at all. I think they, sometimes these things happen in football, but he's a, for us, it's about he's a good age. Uh, the quality is there. He's a fantastic player. Like I said, his qualities in terms of playing as a second striker in between the lines, making something happen in the final third. So we're looking forward to working with him. And transfer wise, it's been a busy January transfer window so far for the club. What four new arrivals already? Is there still time for more to come in? Well, there's time, and, and whether whether we'll find the right players or not is another thing. But there's there's time, as I've said before. You have to look. You have to look in this window to make the the right decisions. But it isn't uh, straightforward because it's complicated. Um, we're we're happy with what we've done so far, but we'll keep we'll keep going to try and help the team. And now build up to tomorrow. Have you got an update on team news? I know we were waiting to hear about Christian Pulisic left for time, Raheem Sterling, yep. Pierre's. A back issue was it mm. against Manchester City? What's the latest? No, Pierre's fine, so he'll be in the squad for the for the game. Um, Christian's a couple of months, we think. Uh, hopefully less, but that's time frame there. Uh, Raheem less, um, but still evaluating the the actual extent of it. But uh, hopefully less than that. And any other players likely to come return any sooner at all? No, I mean, we're making progress. Uh, Ruben's getting closer. Ben Chilwell's getting closer. Um, Reese was out in the grass today, uh, not training with the team, but training on his own. Um, Ngolo's first couple of days out on, on training on his own as well, but still got a long, long way to go. So it, uh, it felt a bit more positive, you know, to see the guys out there. It's, it's, it, it's, it gives people a lift. Finally, for me, obviously, back in Premier League action, just one win in nine. You don't need me really to point that out for you. Do you feel under pressure? Do you feel this is the most pressure you've had in management so far? Do you feel you desperately need a result tomorrow night? Well, I think you always feel pressure. Um, and the higher you go, the more pressure there is from the outside, I guess. Pressure, um, noise, whatever you want to describe it as. Um, and especially a, a club like Chelsea, the responsibility, the, the history, the tradition of the club. Uh, the demands of the club. Whenever you don't get the results that you that you want, then of course there's uh, there's there's noise, there's there's criticism, there's everything that you'd you'd expect. Then you just have to try to put it into perspective and try to keep going with your job and keep trying to improve and stay strong and get through. Thanks, Thank Nip, you. PLP. Hi, Grant. Hi. Hi. Looking back at the most recent performance against City, it wasn't the result you wanted against City, but. How encouraging, encouraging was it that despite the early injuries, your players still showed a lot of intensity, created chances? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was a positive performance overall. We were we were pleased with lots of things we did. Um, like I said, after the game, not easy to recover from the two key ones we we, we lost, but the players did it in, in a good way. I think Manchester City are obviously a top opponent. And... Um, <clears throat> Having said that, we, we 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 matched them, and it was quite an even game. I, I thought in that in that uh, Stamford Bridge game, so there's positives to take from there. Looking at Fulham tomorrow, how impressed have you been with with them, with the way Marco Silva has been leading them so far this season? Yeah, he's done a fantastic job. Um, promotion, uh, they have the belief, they've built on that. Really well organised, um, in and out of possession, know exactly what they're doing. And they're a tough team to play, so he's done a, a fantastic job. We saw Fulham so far against the big <coughs> teams like Arsenal, Liverpool, and Man United played with a lot of a lot of courage. Is that something you expect for them tomorrow, especially at home? 
now they play with courage. They play with personality. They the 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 points they have, they're not an accident. They they they've earned them. They deserve them. So they've they're up there on 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 merit, and they've got the points uh, on merit as well. So tough game, but uh, London derby, and we're looking forward to it. Really looking forward to it. John Five Live. Hi. Graham. Hi. Well, you have to um, understand that uh, it's part of the job. I think um, you only have to look at some of my colleagues in a similar position. Um, Pep, for example, in his first season would have been criticised, I think, quite heavily. I think Mikel Arteta has had a, to endure quite a period of criticism. I think Jurgen Klopp in the first few years would have got some criticism as well, and these guys are, are fantastic. So. Um, you understand, and I think football is, uh, you know, it's emotional. When you lose, it's you don't really think about it. You feel it. You know, you feel the pain. You feel the suffering. You feel the the discomfort. And um, sometimes, you know, it, it's it's hard to understand the why, and it's easy just to blame somebody. So, you know, and and I'm sitting here saying, well, it's not like I've been absolutely perfect. So they're not completely wrong. But I think it's always very complex um, and you just try to put it into perspective. You try to remember that uh, you're capable. You try to remember how you got here and two months ago I was considered to be a top coach and if you consider the people that I've played against and played with and they would probably say the same. But at the same time, I also acknowledge that the results we have aren't, uh, haven't been good enough for us and then you have to accept and deal with it as best you can, and put it, try to put it in perspective, and keep moving forward. Have you spoken to him before? Do you speak to him regularly about the situation? What's, and what's he said to you? Yeah, I've spoken in regular dialogue with all the, you know, the owners. Um, they've been really supportive. Fantastic. Uh, speak on a regular basis, two or three times a week, I would say. Um, and um, they've been nothing but supportive. And is one of your big challenges trying to lift your players? Because I suspect confidence is now. Well, it wasn't so long ago we played well against Bournemouth. Um, we we played against Manchester City, a good game. Back to back games against Manchester City in the space of three three days, uh, and the, the second game in the Etihad, in the moment that we were in, isn't the best fixture you can ask for in the world. That's for sure. Um, and yeah, we're not in the in a top top moment, but these guys are experienced. They're they're honest, they've been fantastic to work with throughout. Um, they're hurting just like everybody else is. So we have to take our responsibilities, we have to face up to our responsibilities and do our best and try to get the three points. Moves, talk sport. Graham, it's clear that it's not going to be a quick fix getting Chelsea back to where they were. Um, how much time do you personally think you're going to need? Well, it, it, it's not like I can give you a... Uh, time frame and then that would be strange for me to do if I had that sort of intelligence about to foresee that time there I mean what I would say is at the moment if you just look at what we have at the moment and where we're at in terms of you know the players that we've got unavailable it, it can skew the p picture a little bit so um if we had those guys back then the picture changes I really do I don't think we're as far away as we may think from you know the outside but at the same time you know you have to keep going from window to window keep, keep trying to improve the squad keep trying to improve the culture keep trying to um, develop the football idea keep moving forward um, you, you know as much as these periods are not nice and they're not um, I think sometimes you have to use them as a as a way to get through them and be stronger as a result of it but at the time it's it's not pleasant it would seem that the only, the, just for the team, the only thing you can win the season is Champions League if you, if you win that competition. But top six, <coughs> top four, is that still an objective? Well, I think it's always an aim. We've got a lot, of, a lot of points to play for, but at the same time, I, I think I'll be wasting my time if I'm worrying about what we're going to do in five months' time. I need to focus on the next day's training and the next match. That's where we're at, at the moment. Um, you know, we can improve a lot. Um, we can, we can a lot more positive quickly with the, with with results with with players with uh, improved performances and things can change the picture can change quickly but at the moment we're suffering and we have to accept it but but work through it
funny with Jao Felix. He has played as a central striker for Atletico Madrid as well as out wide in a number 10 position. Um, the central striker position here at Chelsea, bar Drogba and bar Costa, has been a problem for 20 odd years. Is, is he going to be a man to come in and help solve that problem for you? Or are you going to play him elsewhere? My, my thoughts are that you have to fix the team and it's not just one person to solve your problems. I think you have to fix the team, you have to attack better, create more chances, and then, um, and then I think whoever's playing there can, can, can score and the team can win. That's what we have to do, that's the focus, but clearly Jao's a, a top player, he's a talented player and he can help the team. OK, last question in the broadcast section, Liam Athletic. Hi, Graham. Hi. Well, he's been training regularly and he's had game time. So I think from a physical perspective, he can, he can go in. I mean, you're always, it's always a little bit unknown because you're going from one country to another country and there's always a, an adaptation um, period. But in terms of how long that takes, he can go from case to case, to case and player to player. Uh, I, I look at him, I see a confident person, a confident player, a player that's able to impose himself on the game. His personality, his attributes are that he can take the ball, he can take it in tight spaces, make the difference in the final third, make some passes. Um, I think he com complements what we have as well. So he's a nice addition. We're look really looking forward to working with him.